on divorce court today. After just a month, they knew it was right. But now, three and a half years later, they think it was wrong. Sharon believes Wade has a problem with alcohol, while Wade claims it's her turn to bring in the money. Sharon Norris and Wade Ryden have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toller to resolve. Testimony in divorce court starts now. Ms. Norris, you say your three and a half year relationship with Mr. Ryden is ending because he drinks too much. Tell me about that. Well, in the recent months, he's been coming, he's been drinking daily, getting drunk daily, instead of just coming home and having a couple of beers after work. And I recently came home at lunchtime and at noon he was already intoxicated with his friend at mm -hmm. the house. And it's every day and I can't get Had him to do anything. Had he been drinking when you first met him or when you first moved in together? Has it, or did it change over time? It did change. When we first met, it was after work maybe one or two beers just unwinding after work. Now it's every day just with the intention of getting drunk. Okay. What kind of drunk is he? Is he happy drunk, mean drunk, sleepy drunk, sexy drunk? Um, well, not usually, sexy, but... Usually you know, he's... want sex kind of drunk. Right. <laughs> usually he's pretty happy for the most part unless, you know, he... I say something to him about it and then he can be disrespectful and mm -hmm. kind of rude occasionally. Mr. Ryden, do you have a little problem with alcohol? No, I don't believe I have a problem with alcohol at all. Mm -hmm. I think she's just taking it a little too far. I don't get drunk every single day. She's just well, making it out. You drink every this. day. You unwind a, a glass of beer after after yeah, work. Yeah, of course I have some cocktails. So but... some cocktails. <laughs> yeah. Now, when you say some cocktails, what kind? And give me kind and quantity. Well, it depends on the situation that's at hand. You know, some days I feel like beer, some days I feel like hard alcohol. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it it just if depends you, if, on the day also, you if know? You, if, you, if it's a beer day, how many beers do you typically have? One, two, six, five, you know, I don't know. It's just, <laughs> how many ever until it quits tasting good? And then I stop drinking them. Okay, uh, do you ever stop drinking just because you feel that you, you're becoming intoxicated or, I mean, gone past buzz? Well, that's the whole point of drunk? drinking, is to get drunk. So you drink to get drunk? Yeah, why not? Well, she's got two kids at home, 11 and 15. That's a good reason not to, don't you think? Yeah, but they're not drinking. But they're seeing you drink. Well... Do you trust your judgment when you're drunk? No, I don't. So you're in the house with two kids and you're in a condition where you don't trust your judgment. Does, does that sound like... Does that sound copacetic to you? See, see you know, my, my judgment might be cloudy at that time, but, uh -huh. you know, it's not that... It, I'm not completely out of it and not know what I'm doing. I still know what I'm doing. I just have bad judgment because I'm intoxicated. Okay, because you're doing the wrong, okay. If someone says jump off a bridge, it's probably gonna sound like a good idea to jump off that bridge when I'm intoxicated. Mm -hmm. But when I'm sober, it's probably not gonna that be such a great like idea. such a good idea. I get that. Oh, why do you think Ms. Norris is leaving? You seem to say that you're an affable drunk, you drink, you get drunk, but you don't really cause any problems. Why do you think she's leaving? Maybe because I pay more attention to other things when I'm drinking than her. Like, like what? Uh, say, you know, I'll get online and start looking at social media sites or start watching other video websites and stuff like that. What no, kind it's of not that. You it's, <laughs> it's like I go on and, you know, I, I amuse Man, I myself. I just can't imagine you being drunk going on Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking to figure out where that where that river of alcohol is taking you. Well, I like to watch, you know, funny videos and people getting messed up and stuff oh, like, like that. Oh, like fail blog and all that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, those people are funny, down. yeah, you know, yeah. and I'm drunk and is I want to Is that an accurate representation of the, the way he spends his evening once he's become inebriated? If he's at home. If he's Which at he home, often yes. is not, I'm taken no. by your answer? Yeah, often he's, he's gone. And sometimes he'll come home at three, four o'clock in the morning, and that's usually when he gets rude or disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Is that accurate? Do you get rude and disrespectful when you come home? 
late at night after a night out in the town with the fellas? Maybe in her eyes it's rude and disrespectful, but in mine, I don't see any problem with some of the stuff I say. Can you tell me some things that he said that you found rude and disrespectful? Well, recently I asked him why he was coming home at 4 o'clock, because the bars close at 2, and he was... He basically told me if I didn't like it, I was welcome to leave. Was he... Was what? He... I never said anything like that. M Mr. Crazy. Wright, hang on, hang on. Was he drunk? Oh, yeah. Why would Absolutely. you ask a drunk man an intelligent question? I never understood that. Good point. It's never an opportune time. You don't, you don't get a good answer. You're most likely right. to get anger. You wait till the next day when you can have a conversation. Don't drunk talk to drunk people. Put them to bed. <laughs> um, you say, Mr. Wright, we've been talking about you for a while, so I'm gonna give, get off of you for a moment. Why don't you tell me what your main complaint about Ms. Norris is? Okay, like, when uh, we first got together, you know, she wasn't working, she was going to school, and I was taking care of everything, you know, and I was being the provider, you know, and I never complained, you know? And then all of a sudden, you know, I lost my job, now she has a job that pays well. So, in my eyes, I just feel that, you know, maybe it's time for a little bit of conversation. And, you know, maybe I could stay home for a little while mm -hmm. and take care of the house and stuff like that while she works, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I work in a oil and gas industry, you know, and I have sp certain skills there, so sometimes it takes a little longer to get the job that I'm looking for instead mm -hmm. of just, you know, starting back at the bottom, you know? When right. I'm trying to get back up into a management position, you got, it How takes a little while. How long have you been while. unemployed? For about four months now. Four months? Yeah, okay. something around there. I also understand you don't like the fact that she tries to dictate your social life, that she doesn't like your friends, and that she's jealous. Yeah, you Maybe know, not... there is a lot of that. And uh, it does get old, you know, and I do... Uh, that's why I just stay away most of the time, you know? And like you were saying earlier, my judgment's cloudy, so instead of being at the house and causing problems, you know, I go out and... So, so you abandon her as a public service? <laughs> to her, yeah. It's it's kind of a public service. That's, I wouldn't say public service, I'd say personal, personal service. service. Yes, personal yes, service, personal yes. service. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're absolutely right. It's more accurate than what I said. Next, does Wade spend more time having fun out on the town with his friend than he does with Sharon? Have you been living together for years but find that splitting up is as complicated as divorce? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Divorce Court. Real relationships, raw emotion. Testimony continues now. Ms. Norris, I understand Mr. Ryden has a friend that he sees so often, you call him his wife. Yeah. Why, don't, why don't you explain? Well, this friend sees him more than I do, mm -hmm. and we live together. And so, you know, they're constantly out together. They're always at the strip clubs or at the bars together. Well, when maybe he doesn't if you come wanted to home, go out more often, I go Mr. out with Ryden. you. When he doesn't come home, it's, it's, you know, this is who he was with all the time. And sometimes I just feel like if he wants to spend all his time with his friend, maybe that's who he should be with. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ryden, you, you had a response to that. That would be... Yeah, you know, I have a close friend. And we like to hang out. And a lot of the times, she doesn't want to go out and do the stuff that we're doing because she comes back from work and she says that she's tired and she doesn't want to go out and do stuff. And my buddy always wants to go out and do stuff. And plus, you know, he's kind of rich and he takes me out and we go have a good time and I don't have to spend any money, so... I'm all for it. Do, you know, you said earlier in the proceedings that, you know, in the beginning you used to take care of her and now, uh, you know, financially, and then she was home and she would take care of the home part. Now that those um, roles are reversed, it seems that she's taking care of you financially, but you are not uh, providing any sort of support and care in the home. I'm still taking care yeah. of the house and cleaning up the house and you know, cooking meals and stuff like that. You know, it's not that I'm just not doing anything at all. You know, marriage is not just a bunch of chores. It's not just a job and then I cook and clean, you bring money, I cook and clean, you bring money. You have to actually, or, or a committed relationship, you have to actually engage in things as a couple in order for that relationship 
to grow. Have you done anything in that regard? A little bit. Like, I try to do stuff, but then it always just gets shot down that she doesn't want to do it. Are you sober when you do them? Most of the time, I try. <laughs> Put yourself in her shoes for a minute. You're working, got a couple of kids, you come home, and the person you're supporting is like, okay, I'm gonna go out drinking with the money that you gave me because you don't have any money, or I guess it's your friend's money, but wouldn't you feel a little abandoned or misused if you were just providing shelter for, for a, a junior alcoholic? <laughs> I don't know, because I'm not in that situation. But you can so. think, though. You're not, you're not a dumb guy. But You've got an education. If she doesn't want to go, then I don't see any reason why I shouldn't. Do you see any reason why you should do things that she wants to do that don't involve alcohol or your wife? Yes. But do you do them? No, I don't. And why not? Because I feel that drinking and going out and having a good time sounds like a better idea. You know you're better off, right? You right. know this is a good thing. Right. You know that departure is, 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 is a celebration here. It's, it's, it's a glory moment. It you is. don't have any children with him? No. No. You got a job. I do, you got two of them. And you got two jobs, and you're beautiful, and, and, and you are shedding 220 pounds of dead weight. Right. Congratulations. Thank you. When Divorce Court Continues, is Wade unable to prove that Sharon is messing around because she's innocent or because she's good at covering her tracks? Do you agree with Wade that it is Sharon's turn to bring home a salary? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call now. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. And join the conversation on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court continues. You say that Mr. Ryden is a jealous man. Can you tell me why you say that? I got a phone call from my boss, and this is just recent, and he heard a male's voice on the line and he started yelling in the background demanding to know who it was and you know I tried moving to the other room so I could actually have a work conversation with my boss and it just got so out of hand that when I hung up with my boss he took my phone and called the number back just to verify who it, it was. It was in fact your boss. Yeah and he wants to look at my phone all the time and I always say yeah we'll trade and you know you look at mine I'll look at yours and that's not going to happen. That ends that conversation. Yeah. Oh. Miss, Mr. Ryan. Mr. Wright, why don't you tell me your version of the telephone exchange and the conversations that she has on her phone. Are you jealous? Sometimes, mm -hmm. but not all the time. It's just, uh, she's always accusing me of going out and doing stuff and cheating on her or, you know, being with other women, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I figured I'd just reverse the role and, you know, I just do the same thing. And, you know, I tell her I want to look at her phone and see who she's talking to. And she's always like, oh, it's my boss or it's my brother. And it's like, really, you can't be talking to your boss and your brother that much. There's not that much to talk about. Have so. you in, uh, found that she has been having conversations with people, with men that were inappropriate? No, I haven't. So. Uh -huh. Right, and I'm not the one coming home. <laughs> Mr. Ryden, I tell you, you, you got a lot of negative qualities, but, but dishonesty isn't one of them, and I appreciate that. You're very, very honest. You, you, you're so, right out there with it. I got, I got a son at home. Yep, Mom, I did it. You know, it's just like... But, but, you know, she's a pretty intelligent person, so, you know, she could be erasing all this stuff before I look at it because she knows no that I'm going to ask to look at she's it. She's got two jobs and she's got kids at home. You don't really believe she's running around on you, do you? Well, when you're sitting at work, you got your phone in your hand, you know, you, who knows what you could be doing. But you don't so, believe that. I just called you honest and now you're acting a fool. But there's, look, a but there's still a chance. There's still a chance. There's always a chance, but there's nothing indicative of a cheat. Because I've always felt that if someone's starting to call you a cheater out of nowhere, then there's probably something going on out behind the nowhere. scenes. Oh, well, that's just silly. The only reason that I even say that is because he's been seen kissing other girls at the bar. He comes home smelling like other women, covered with glitter. Has any of that I've never kissed another girl at, at the, the bar, club. but I have hung out with them. Right. 
Right. And, you know, it's Are like you window sure shopping. that when you're drunk, you haven't gone past uh, the limitations you have set for yourself? Oh, no, no. I, I don't cheat. So You don't cheat? That's I, just I've not your thing. I've had it happen to me in the past, and, you know, I, I think it sucks, so I don't do it. So, okay. But, you know, if I'm hanging out with some female companions and they're hanging out and we're flirting and stuff like that, having fun, I don't see any problem with that. You know, I'm not taking it home. I'm coming home to her every night. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't see any reason why I can't flirt around and have fun and mess around. You know, mess, you know, just having a good time. You don't see any problem with it at all. I, I'm not doing anything, you know? Okay. It's just like, well, you it's say... like trying on a pair of sneakers, but not buying them. <laughs> One of my best friends called me and reported that she was at the bar that he was at, and there was a girl hanging all over him, kissing him. Your best and if my a liar. kids, if my kids weren't at home, I would have been down there and I would have busted him. I'm glad your kids were home because you really didn't need to go down there. No good ever comes of that kind of confrontation. Right. You know, it's just, it's not... Some women will put their kids in the car and take them with them down to the bar. Right. Jump out and wail on somebody. So a little restraint is a good thing, you know, because, you know, when you roll, you want to roll clean. You don't want to have an That's assault true. charge on you. You know, it's just, it's, it's not helpful. Judge Lynn Toller's ruling next. Divorce Court, Judge Lynn Toller's ruling right now. Mr. Ryden, do you care at all that she's leaving? You know, I did when she first started threatening me with it. Mm -hmm. and, but then, you know, I just came to the point where, you know, if she wants me gone and she's tired of me, then, you know, I might as well just go then, you know, and mm -hmm. just, just be gone. I don't want to go because, you know, I, I feel that after three and a half years that we, you know, we still have a, a good relationship. You know, maybe my drinking is excessive sometimes, but you know that can be resolved and taken care of. But you know, it's, she's just fed up with me. You know, mm -hmm. and it's the I'm still you gonna know, go and, out and, and have I hear fun. When you, I'm not gonna. I hear a you say that can wife. be resolved, but you've you've come in here with an attitude of resignation to the situation. In other words, you're saying, well, I like to party, I like to drink. That's what it is. Not I'd like her to stay, and I'll be better. I'm not gonna lock myself in the house and just be like. Oh, Sharon, I'm here for you, and I'm going to be your slave. Here, let me take your shoes off and massage your feet. There is an, t an entire continent between what she's asking for and that nonsense you talking over there. <laughs> so let's, you know, and we, and we cannot... I cannot, in the little time that remains, help you traverse that territory. So we just... I'm going to stop talking to you. Uh, Ms. Norris, you want $320.52. Why do you want that specific amount? Um, to pay off the balances that we have on bills right now. I think he should pay at least half of what's owed. And your response to that would be, Mr. Ryden. If she wants me to leave, why can't she just take care of it and just let me go on my way? Okay, I got you. Well, first of all, I'll say, Ms. Norris, if I find <laughs> out that you have gone back to this man, I'm gonna come over your house personally and call you some names. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You hear me? Absolutely. Don't get weak. Don't get sad. Don't start to miss him. Don't do any of the above foolishness because you have got it together. You need to move on. And, and I'm sometime... already over the missing him part. You, you, you over all oh, yeah. of that? You done? You yeah, sure? absolutely. Mr. Ryden, if you're ever so lucky to get another woman or some woman is so unlucky to get you, <laughs> let me suggest this, that you be a little less glib and a little more of a man. And, you I'm know... I'm all man. In, oh, no, no, no. Oh, yes, yes, Oh, no, yes, no, no, yes, no. Yes, let, let me tell you something. What a man is is a, is a person who can conduct a relationship in which he doesn't get his way all of the time. He has the ability to see others' needs and meet them without falling apart. And a real man knows that that's what makes him his man, is able to, to, to care for love and, and, and provide happiness and security to somebody other than himself. For having said that, I will say this. $320.52 is more than a reasonable response, so I will award you that. Three twenty fifty two dollars in favor of Ms. Norris. It is so ordered. <laughs> Sharon and Wade agree with the judge's ruling and have moved on. Post a comment or submit your case at divorcecourt.com or call toll-free 1-877-311-2222. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Divorce Court.